Hello and welcome to this WP Tuts Plus video tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover how to add Ajax powered interactions to the WordPress loop using jQuery and the 2011 theme for WordPress. This video assumes that you are familiar with the jQuery JavaScript library, that you have some basic understanding of Ajax, and that you are comfortable editing WordPress PHP files. To get us started with this tutorial, we're going to be starting with the child theme based on the 2011 theme for WordPress. We start off here inside of the child theme folder, which is located in the themes directory inside of wp-content. To start out with, your child theme folder should only have a single style sheet linking to the parent theme. To this folder, we will add the following. An empty PHP file named functions.php, a folder named images, a copy of the index file from the parent theme, a folder named JS, an empty PHP file named loophandler.php, and also inside of the JS folder, an empty JavaScript file named ajaxloop.js. We're going to start off here in our functions.php file. By default, jQuery is not automatically added to the 2011 theme. In the first function call, we need to deregister any previous jQuery script. We then use the register script call to register jQuery, and we set our source to the Google CDN to take advantage of any browser caching. We then call wp in script in the third function call. And then by calling add action, we register the function we created using the hook wp in scripts. We then need to add a function for our custom script, following the same steps we did for adding jQuery. The main difference here is that we are going to add a locally stored file rather than one that is hosted by Google. Also, because this script will be dependent on jQuery being loaded, we will add this third call to handle that dependency. Now that we have our scripts queued, we can start working on our loop. First, we need to open the index.php file inside our child theme folder. Once we are there, we need to highlight the loop and copy it to the clipboard. From there, we paste the code into our loophandler.php file. And once we've done that, we need to make sure to return to the index.php file and remove the code. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to clean up our code a little bit to make it easier to see the additions we will make. We now have the basic code we need to get posts from our database. One problem at this point is that our loophandler.php file has no knowledge of WordPress or WordPress functions on its own. To solve this issue, we will add a couple lines of code above our loop, which will include the necessary data. First, we need to define our WP use themes constant to false, so that we do not load any extra data that we don't need. We then require once our wp-load.php file. Since we've put our loophandler.php in the root of our child theme folder, we can use the relative path as it's only three levels up. Next, we will use the get variable to collect data that we will later send. We will want to add two variables, one that will store the requested number posts and one that will store the page number. We should put special emphasis on page here because we don't truly have any pages to load, but instead a single page that will continue to load more and more posts as we scroll down. Now we need to add just a couple more lines of code to allow us to query the database using the query posts function. We need to pass an array of arguments to the query, which will request number posts and the page number we wish to get. We will query the database, loop through the results, and then we will need to reset the query afterwards for good measure. Now that we have our handler created, let's start adding the necessary JavaScript to our ajaxloop.js file. First, let's add a jQuery function, which waits for the document to load. Next, let's set up some variables. The page variable will store which page we are loading and will increase each time we load more content. Our second variable, loading, will keep track of the content status. Later, when we write our function to check the scroll of the window, we do not want it to execute if we are still in a loading state. Since we'll be loading our first page automatically, we'll set loading to true. The next variable, window, will store the window DOM element after we query it with jQuery. Storing this query as a variable is useful because we do not want to have to make additional calls to jQuery and it helps improve our performance. Our last variable, content, will store the returned element inside the container we wish to use for loading our content. And on the body element, we target the class of blog so that the other pages will not be affected. Now we need to create our Ajax call function. First, we store our load post function as a variable so that we can reuse it as necessary. 
When we make a jQuery call, we pass an object as the argument. The object consists of key pair values, which will be the options we will set. First, we set the type to get. Second, we set the data option to another object of key pair values, consisting of our options, number posts, and page number. The data type option specifies the type of data that will be returned from the server. In this case, it will be HTML. The URL option points to our loophandler.php file. This is the file it will request data from. Remember to replace this block with your actual URL, and then change this to the name of your child theme folder. After that, we'll set up our three callbacks, before send, success, and error. In the before send callback, we will be adding logic to create an animated loading GIF to display while data is being requested. We will pass a parameter, which we name data, to the success function, and this will be the return data object from the server. We will be setting up that function soon. Our error callback will handle any server errors returned. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will just output the error messages. Now we need to build our success callback function. So far, we have passed the data to jQuery and stored it in a variable we named data. We use a jQuery function to hide the data. We then append the data to our content container. Once the data is appended, we fade it in at 500 milliseconds or one half second. Now we will need to add a few more items which control the display of data on page scroll. First, we need to add a function which handles loading posts that will be called on page scroll. In this page scroll handler, we need to check to see if data is currently waiting to be loaded. Here we put in the logic to check the location of our scroll relative to the end of the content container. We also set our loading to true so that we don't make any additional calls before the new data is loaded. Before every call to our load post function, we also add one to our page variable so that we get new data. The reason we add to the page number before the load post function call is that we have already called it once during the initialization of the script. Here we call our load post function for the first time. And finally, we will be setting the loading variable to false in the callback of our fade in function call. Finally, we need to add a loader GIF so that the user has some feedback that the page is processing data. Save the image as ajaxloader.gif inside of the images folder we created in our child theme. Now we need to add code to our ajaxloop.js file, which will check to see if the page number is not equal to 1, and then append the div for our loading GIF. We have also added a check to make sure that if there is no data, the loading GIF is removed. When our last call to the server is sent and there are no more posts to load, we'll no longer be setting our loading variable to false, so we need to make sure to clean up the last Ajax loader GIF. We will be in a loading state from then on out and our scroll function will no longer make any calls to our load post function. To see what we've done here, let's go to the home page of our site. You can see when I refresh the page that the first post is loaded down below and fades in. As we scroll down and reach the bottom of the container, we trigger our Ajax call function, which loads our next post. As we continue to scroll down the page, when we reach the bottom of an article, a new article is loaded for us automatically. Once the last article is called, you can see we've essentially reached the bottom of our page. Obviously, this is an example of one way that you can add Ajax and jQuery to your site. And while clearly this would not be a good solution for a site with a large number of posts, it does give you some idea of what you can accomplish.